talking about phones really quick. What is the most you have ever paid for a phone? Like I, just, I just wait for a two year like agreement. So yeah, just do bucks. that. Yeah, every every couple of years, spend like two hundred bucks. I think. Yeah. yeah. What about what about you? W- would just... you admit how much <laughs> how much you spent on a phone? Oh, I've I've never spent anything on a phone because I just wait like an appropriate amount of birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. That's smart. And then ask my parents. So, Adrian, what would you they, like? like? Well, buy I do me phone. lots of things, yeah. but yeah, I'm like I I can't, I throw it into a to a like a Christmas or a birthday or just wrap something. it into one of yeah. those yeah I've they're just getting you the free phones that are just you, like that is it they're phone. like yeah. $10 yeah, yeah. <laughs> um all right brandon we're gonna need to get your answer too i think we're live right now though so i just want to come in here hello this is trends with benefits this is our weekly roundtable podcast where we talk about tech and everything that's going on in the world of that and we've got a few different things we're going to get to today uh including talking about iPhones, the new iPhone, there is always a new rumor out there. And today we got a bunch of them. So we're going to kind of talk about that and how much you would be willing to pay for a new phone, which is what we're discussing. Um, I'm your host, Greg Nibbler. I'll say this. I think the most I've ever spent is 100 bucks, And that's just for like the Verizon, like a two-year agreement thing. Is that I had to pay that, and then I think even got a rebate. So that was, they always seem to throw cheap. in free stuff. You know, yeah. I'll go and they're like, "Hey, here's a speaker, here's headphones, here's right. screen protectors, right? Here's a card charger, yeah, or something right. like that." Okay, yeah, sure. I'll fall for all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I'll do that. So I probably end up paying a lot more, but I would say, yeah, hundred bucks is the most I've paid. And so we want to hear what you guys would pay or how much you would. But we're, let's uh, introduce our crew here right now today. To my right. Rick Stella, I'm a staff writer here for Digital Trends. Staff writer for Digital Trends. And so you said uh, you just wait for the two-year agreement. Yeah, it's the same thing as you. I think yeah. I've, I, the most I spent is probably 200 and it was on this iPhone 6. Okay. Um, which is now ancient, obviously. But, um, yeah, I think 200 Disgusting. is Disgusting. It's so ancient. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, first time on the show. Hi. Uh, Adrian Warner, and I'm a producer here at Digital Trends. Excellent. So, Adrian, you said you just wait for your phone to be wrapped into your... Christmas pretty presents. much into my Christmas birthday, but I'm like you. If I was going out on my own, I would not spend more than a hundred dollars. Yeah. maybe like one fifty. Like, if it costs more than like a hair dye job or <laughs> or fixing <laughs> a car, the, yeah, right, it's right. just yeah, ridiculous. That's the, the that's the cutoff point right there. So <laughs> <laughs> if I can't get my hair. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. Let me look at some hair let dye prices real out. quick. Uh, I wouldn't be able to see going to I'm good. Yeah, yeah. All right, and down on the end? Uh, I am Brandon Witter. I'm an associate editor at Digital Trends. So, Brandon, what's the most you've ever paid for a phone? I think 200 and yeah. that was through a subsidized contract, okay. which I think they've scrapped. Haven't like they scrapped the, that across the board? And which phone was it for? It was for the iPhone. I think it was the 6, the last one I got. Okay. okay. They've scrapped it since then. All right, so 200 bucks. That 200 was bucks. I'd that was pay more. It. Right. You would pay more. I would pay more. Um, well, we've got you for would. the iPhone egg. You, I would how much would you well, pay? Then? Would you pay a thousand dollars? Because that's no, what we're going to get into. Yeah. Would you pay the retail <laughs> price like we were yeah. talking about? Six forty nine. Definitely not. Yeah. I mean, in the long run, in a lot of cases, you do. Um, we've got a lot of comments here that are rolling in with people's opinions about how much they would pay for a phone. So let's. We're going to get into those. Let me explain this. What we're talking about with the iPhone and why we're saying a thousand dollars. And it's part of the new rumors that are coming about out about the iPhone eight and what it's going to be called and what it could include. And the latest thing is kind of a insider's, quote-unquote, supposedly <laughs> talked to, uh, to uh, let's see, a Fast Company, which is the name of a, a company, Fast Company, a media company. And they said that the new iPhone may not even be called the iPhone 8. There's a good chance it could be called the iPhone X, which is so edgy, to go back to the X thing right now. <laughs> X but X, so it would be like the 10-year anniversary. And it's got a uh. few different things. That could, that's what they're speculating. Sure. I was just thinking it was like a Microsoft <laughs> thing where they just skip eight and nine and go right to ten. And go to, a, yeah. go to an <laughs> alphabet, just, a letter in the alphabet. Yeah. Well, X is ten in Roman numerals, isn't I it? Guess yeah. You're right, yeah. yeah. So it, yeah. So that technically, I mean, yeah, that could, yeah, maybe that, or maybe it's just X because it's ten edgy. year anniversary. Yeah. X right. Games are trying to bring that back. I don't know, but it's. Uh, <laughs> the, I mean, X Games <laughs> is still around. It's still around. <laughs> it's, still yeah, I guess so. I, I guess so. The Winter yeah. X Games were just yeah. like a few weeks ago. All right, that's yeah. true. Okay, so well, I mean, that's part of it. But it's the, <laughs> the iPhone X, and um, part of the rumors of what it may include, and I'm going to kind of go through some of these, and then I'll read some of your comments if you're watching live on Facebook or on YouTube. We'll uh, include you in here. So. Uh, part of it is supposedly a 5.8 inch OLED screen, which OLED screens are expensive. So I guess if they want to include that in, that's what they're saying would be a, a big thing that would raise the price. Also, um, it would have a steel, a stainless steel body mounted in it. But there's two different rumors with this. This is one of them is saying that it'll have the stainless steel body, which I guess, okay, I don't see right. how that gets up to $1,000. Um, but one other thing is this new piece of tech that they're working on with a 3D sensing camera. And what they're saying it may be used for is for facial recognition or augmented reality. 
3D sensing camera, like 3D yeah, sensing that's 3D. camera. Yeah, <laughs> that's 3D. Yeah. Right? I mean, I know it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will start real, real quick with the OLED screen. Yes. At 5.8 inches, is, does it even make... A difference that no, it's OLED, 8. like 5. or 8.5 inches. This says 5.8. 5.8 is according to this rumor that Fast Company. So it'll also be bezel-less, right? Right. Uh, bezel-less. Yes, yeah. that's true. So that's it'll be bezel-less. Um, they may even get rid of the home button. Get rid of even. Um, yeah, they said even the volume button. So it may be completely buttonless, essentially. Put the hi- headphone yeah. jack in, then take it out again. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Optional headphone jack if you want that. Um, let's see. Taking a look here in the uh, live chat. Let's see how many iPhones does it take to change a light bulb. Uh, not really sure where to go. That, this is what happens when you, when you read live comments. Um, let's see. It would have to clean my house and wash my car to pay $1,000 yes. for it. I kind of agree with that. Yes. Uh, I would definitely uh, go with that. Must be nice. That's $100. I've never paid less than that. 100 bucks. So that's what uh, Melvin said that uh, he's paid for an iPhone. Let's see. Um, he's vetting these comments. <laughs> yeah, I know. Take a look here. As <laughs> we're transform to an iPad. That's oh yeah, like yeah. No, I'm. <laughs> we've, we've got a few comments rolling in, but let us know. You know, what would it take for you to pay a thousand dollars for for a phone, be it an iPhone, an Android, whatever it is? Um, Adrian, what do you think about this? Like, what, what do you think about yeah, this? Thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. I mean, this does sound like pretty cutting edge technology. If they do have all this that goes through with this 3D sensing camera and how that would work, facial recognition, augmented reality. A bigger battery is what they're saying, so it would have a really long battery life. I mean, I guess, yeah. how long do you normally keep a phone? Like, my phones, I, buy, I have the cheap ones, so it's usually every year or so. I either yeah. break it or I get a new one, but I don't pay very much right. for them. So, I mean, yeah, mine are probably about a four-year lifespan or so. Uh-huh. I mean, I That's keep them long, for a actually. long time, yeah. and I'm pretty – the thing is, is, like, so I was really focused on the size, first of all, because I can't, I can't hold these things. I got, I got Trump hands. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like I can't. The bigger they get, the less I can like function with right. them or yeah. use them. But the only other thing that I would consider buying uh, or or spending more money on for is a camera. And the Seven already has a really good camera. If this can, if this has a 3D camera, that's kind mm-hmm. of a game changer in terms of like what can I use for either uh, like semi-pro kind of purposes uh, and right. then I would spend money on it because it's like okay because if you can it's, make it's like money buying a it. new Nikon or something right, like that right it also doubles as your phone right right exactly but otherwise like it better be making breakfast for me like because <laughs> you could spend that money on a new computer yeah. you could several new yeah. computers but like if you wanted even like a new Mac computer you'd only be a few mm-hmm. hundred dollars off of a brand new MacBook you mm-hmm. know which is like I don't know spending a thousand dollars even spending 700 on a phone is crazy to me yeah it's a right. lot but it is a device you utilize every day I'm on my phone more than my computer well, yeah that's not, true which is, which is work, true it doesn't yeah. do I mean I guess, I guess you could argue that it it does more I was gonna say it doesn't do as much as a computer I would think I'd like, say it does just as much being able to make so would calls. it be w- would it be worth it for you to spend no. spend this much money? <laughs> <laughs> but it's still not still a thousand. Now. I would really like to see high, um, higher end audio components in um, iPhones, mm. which I would pay more personally for. For the higher end audio, yeah, that would be kind of a thousand dollars. Better audio really output, still output or like yeah, recording? so you can listen yeah. to higher uh, bit rate one. Didn't yeah. they go away from that by taking out the headphone jack though? Too isn't it harder to get better audio in the Lightning? Connector, you know, right? This is I a no really audio. I don't know. Phone. Yeah, exactly. If we had like Ryan or Caleb in here, they'd be able to tell us. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't even. I don't even know if I'd still pay a thousand if it was. A thousand's pushing it. Yeah, yeah. Like the, it, the screen is like my the least of my concerns. Right. The nicer the screen, the less likely I want to buy it because the more likely I am to screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can't get it at a subsidized price, yeah. then it's only a what like one hundred fifty dollars more if you're getting a than if you were getting a plus. That's a good. Point. A current plus. Right. So you're paying one hundred fifty dollars more. Right. Which is, I don't, it's not a little, but it's, uh, it's not huge. So I feel like yeah. the majority of people have to buy it at cheaper than the full retail price, right? I mean, I know a lot of people like wait in line for, for days just to get the new iPhone and spend right. 100 bucks on it. I mean, I've seen those lines. It's, yeah, right. It's all installment out. plans now. I really? Like, yeah, pretty uh, much across the board, sense. unless yeah. you're buying it outright. But you're still going to end up paying, you know, that much or you're more. You're paying 25, 30 bucks a month over yeah. the course of two years. Which is, so. that's crazy. I don't know. Lease a phone. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's what you're right. doing. Yeah. That repo you... man coming from my phone. <laughs> I missed my twenty dollar payment. <laughs> Tracking you wherever you go yeah, because right. it'll be able to track you. They could, yeah. Well that's um, the other thing see. is doesn't it come with like facial recognition? And that's part of what the new camera would be. So it would have uh, a couple of the other features. And these are the rumors that the new iPhone, possibly called X, may have uh, coming out. They're saying maybe the end of this year or beginning of 2018. But yeah, with the new 3D Sense uh, camera, it would have facial recognition, AR capabilities. Um, a bunch of things that would be along with that. They don't know everything. Depth sensing camera, so clear benefits for iPhone photography. So maybe that's part of it where you can make some 
make some money with your iPhone, I guess, if you're going to be a professional photographer with it, which almost, you know, you could, almost could now. My iPhone is better than my DSLR. Really? Yeah. I mean, it, obviously, yeah. the latter is pretty old, but mm-hmm. I mean, it's still impressive. Um, let's see. People are different. Jeff says uh, features that are not even sought yet uh, seems like a bad reason to move forward with that type of. Well, I feel yeah, like we get this conversation every year. That it's like, yeah. oh, this crazy feature is going to be on the next iPhone, and then they announce it, and it's just like a little bit better than the previous model. Right. With nothing. I guess the headphone jack one we had talked about for a while, and that was that was true. But I feel like there's always these crazy like, oh, they're going to put this and that and this and that, and it's going to make it this like ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I mean, you can cutting edge at, phone. Yeah. You go to the Touch Bar and the new Max. That right. was something that no one necessarily needed, and, and so far the reception's been, it hasn't been great. Like, like man, yeah. yeah, for well, the extra that's, money. This, people are still wondering why to even utilize it, and why right. is it warranted. And this sounds like they're basically doubling down on that kind of technology within full OLED yeah. you know, camera, where you get rid of any kind of buttons at all. Um, Holly says, I just realized I spent $850 on my iPhone 7 Plus, so 150 bucks Holy. more. There you go. Then at that yeah. point, you're, you're getting right in there. Yeah. Um, William Roberts says, $1,000 is too much for any phone, especially we can get an iPad for the same price. And that's the thing for me. Like, if you're going to spend that much. Although, Brandon, you make a good point. You are with this all, every day. Yeah. I do use my phone more than anything you can only else. Make calls on the, I guess you can make calls with an iPad at home over Wi-Fi, maybe. And I would argue an iPad is way less efficient and useful than an iPhone. Really? I feel like it's yeah. just a, a big tablet. Toy. Yeah. Um, a couple of other rumors of possible with this iPhone X. As we're going through some of the iPhone 8 rumors. If you have questions or comments, go ahead and drop those in there. And these are um, all unconfirmed, correct? Unconfirmed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, around. these are all rumors. Oh. Pretty much everything's unconfirmed until we really, really find out. So uh, Tim Cook. So, yeah. so yeah. Tim Cook, yeah, <laughs> makes an announcement. Right? Get you two out there. Yeah. <laughs> and, we're like, and we're bringing back the headphone Passed. jack. That's, right. that's going to be the big announcement. Um, but uh, I, they did take out a patent on... Uh, on a new type of technology for a flexible display. So it's essentially what it would be with a, either an LCD or OLED panel that they could bend and actually use, utilize it. One of the possible ideas they said is to make it so you could wear your phone as a watch if you wanted to, you know, take it off. Like one of those like, like a slap, slap band. Yeah. Yeah. Like a slap band, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And, uh, but uh, totally useless. And whether that's for <laughs> this, yeah, totally you know, I mean, I guess maybe you could utilize it right. for something. I don't know. Awesome is starting to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The awesome. middle school kids. This is getting it more to towards that thousand yeah, dollars right? for you. Um, yeah. So it's a, some proprietary technology that they took out a patent on. No word on whether this is going to be part of that new iPhone X. But let me ask that question then. Mm-hmm. Would that be enough to push you over the edge? I if think you it could would bend your phone, if you could, wear, if you could slap your factor, phone yeah. onto yeah, your wrist. Uh, well, not that, not that specific functionality, <laughs> but uh, but wasn't there? I don't know if this still exists with the iPhone Seven. The problem of it curving if you sit on it too much. Uh huh. Yeah. Is that really just the purpose of that? Uh, or like or like gate, yeah. Too? Wasn't the six ben like gate? the bend gate where you <laughs> put it in your pocket? <laughs> right, and it would bend, and it bent and broke. Right. So I guess yeah, it's a little more durable. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't have a plus. Yeah. But, um, um, we'll have to ask Holly. I think she's got the seven plus. <laughs> I Has think it they broken yet? Ben, I think it was called Bendgate, wasn't it? Bendgate, like yes. That? Yeah. yeah. And I think it was in the iPhone six. You're right, pluses. and that kind of went away too. Way to bring that back. <laughs> yeah. <good>. Bendgate. <laughs> yeah, happened a lot with, uh, with the larger models, I think. Yeah, the six and, plus. Uh, I think where people were in, like and wearing yeah. like tight yeah. jeans that it yeah. was like it was tight jeans. Yeah, that's your own fault at that point. Exactly. Yeah, which must be in Portland. It was a you know rampant issue. Groundbreaking, breaking news. But didn't um, Samsung do like the bendable OLED sc- or like talk about doing the bendable OLED screen for a couple of years now? They, they've talked right about it. Else. Yeah, it's it's one of those. Uh, I think LG has talked about LG. About right. It. There's always well, those photos of the people like ro- they have it rolled up and it's like a screen that you can tell yeah. something's going wow. on. Um, Erica says, I don't understand why the price is such a shock to people when the seven with 128 gigabytes is running 750. I just saw this coming. Yeah, and you're right at that point. I mean, if you're willing to go 750, you don't know word on what the memory would be on this. I think they'd have to have at least and, fairly good memory. And this is just the X. This isn't right. even the next model. Yeah. This, there could still be an 8 renounced in the fall, and this one could come out prior to that. There could be, yeah. So. And uh, so, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to say exactly what's going to be incorporated into each one. But that's that's the big rumors. iPhone X, 1000 bucks. Yeah, I don't even know if it's like we're so surprised by the price as much as it's just unfathomable to think that people would spend that kind of money on a phone. At least, like, yeah. like I, I've only ever bought a phone when I'm up for a new, like, contract or agreement with Verizon, and I'll just spend the 200 bucks. Like, and I look at, like, the retail price and just, like, don't even pay attention to it because I'm not, like, I'm never going to spend that on the phone, mm-hmm. you know? Well, I think AT&T scrubbed that. Um, so now you have to buy them. So you and have to buy it you, you have to pay for an installment plan. Jeez. Oh, wow. um, on YouTube here, and take a look as the comments come in. And again, keep these coming because it's a fascinating discussion, like how much you're willing to pay for a phone and what what it would take 
for you to, to plunk down this much money. Uh, Pacey says I'd pay $1,000 for a watch that functions as well as a phone. And I think with that kind of technology, the bendable OLED, mm -hmm. that's something we, maybe we could see right. where that would be going with where you'd have a watch and I guess talk into it like it's a... Dick like Tracy watch. I thought the like, Apple Watch was just getting started now. Yeah. <laughs> it just go away. Bendable yeah. Oh, uh, going back to like the ergonomics that mm -hmm. I kind of brought up earlier, if it's, that makes a lot of sense to me. Like, I feel like I'd drop my phone less if I could bend it and like make it more f like uh, <laughs> or fold it into what you yeah, want like, like, I, or like you know if you're on a plane you could curve it or right. or anything like that yeah it seems like a kind of an a limitless possibilities but i don't know like what the solutions that right it's called. yeah uh jack uh, who i believe we all know just said sign me up so jack's willing to plunk down the jack's money right excited. now yeah jack, jack's already <laughs> said he's already got an account just for this uh, for when it does come out um you let's see jeff says DC funds yeah <laughs> <laughs> Just says, it's it, all for the review. If I were Apple, I would uh, consider pursuing better privacy control, and there would definitely be a market for a more secure phone. That's true. We don't know anything about that part of it. I would think that that would be included in something like that. They've done up the grade. More secure, it seems like. Yeah. That's yeah. Part. Yeah, um, yeah, a lot of comments coming in here about whether people would want it. Uh, Ross asks, does it have a lithium oxygen battery? I don't know. Um, again, these are all rumors. Nothing's 100% confirmed. Speaking on security, I mean, didn't the, didn't the FBI fail at getting into an iPhone? I mean, wasn't that the whole they, debate? No, they were stopped. They eventually got in. They did, they, yeah. They, yeah. they, they hired another they firm it, to be able to do it. But it took them a really long time, and it was, like, real, like kind of going against, you know, or, like, it was, like, sh they were struggling with it for a very long yeah. time. And Apple so. wasn't cooperating that that's what it was, either. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Anyway, we can move on. That was just... Yeah, well, we no, it's, it's, a, it's a really good discussion. I mean, yeah. it's just what people are willing to pay, because, I mean, and this is at least, at least, I would say, eight months out before we would even see anything with a new iPhone, whether it's this one or whatever it's going to be. And people have been talking about it for a year. You know, ever since the, the last one came out, it's already, okay, well, what's the next one? Yeah, what's the very the next, next day after they even released where he'd, like, not said it. I mean, it's every September. I, you know, we, we yeah. can talk about it now in February, but not until, like, September 7th or 10th or whatever, when they get on stage, we, we know anything about yeah. what is going on. I, so I mean, I think we're pretty safe to say they're going to have to do something different than last time because of the disappointment from last time other than, yeah. you know, you don't you have know, a headphone jack, so. Yeah. But, you know, we've talked about this again again that Apple isn't exactly a leader in innovation lately. Yeah, so, yeah. So, but so then they still sell more iPhones. It's like they sold yeah. more sevens than oh, they sold sales are ever. Way up. Like yeah. So you know, yeah. There's a lot of people that are angry and loud about it, but then there's uh -huh. still a ton of people that spend the money on these phones. You know, and keep buying them. Well, so there's, something's working. Something's you know. working with it. Um, <coughs> Fanboy. All right, we do have a. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not yeah, just the guy who has an iPhone. Yeah, right. <laughs> we all. Do you have an iPhone? I do. Yeah. I have a six, just like you. Yeah. See, and I've never had an iPhone, so I guess mm -hmm. I mean I realize they're fantastic, um, but I think if I were going to go for a high end one, I'd probably go for a Samsung. That's that's probably where I would go with it. But I think it's a matter of personal taste. Yeah, and I just can't. Yeah, I just can't true. do Android. I like the yeah. iOS. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's personal personal choice on each one of those. But yeah, people are still getting comments coming in. So keep those comments coming, and we'll we'll come back to that. We do have to get to a couple of other things, and uh, one is Amazon, and this is something else that we're probably going to see soon that I think is going to start popping up in more places, and it's Amazon's new actual physical stores, and the, they've got one in Seattle right now that's kind of a a uh, test store and it's called Amazon Go. And essentially, it's an employee-less store. You walk in, you grab what you want off of a shelf, it scans um, your Amazon account, and you just walk right out. And so you can see on the, they've got a video demo. If you're listening via right. podcast, there's a video demo I'll post on this link. And yeah, it's just people walk in, grab stuff off the shelves, throw it in their bag, walk out, they get scanned via, via an NFC chip or something like that, and it's uh, charged to their Amazon account. And now they're talking about opening up more of these around because I guess the test part has gone so well and the supermarkets might cover up to 40,000 square feet with only between three and 10 employees on staff. So this That's has been it. successful oh, in and Seattle? This is, this it's is been supermarket su only at this point, not department store or... Correct. Supermarket only so far. And I believe they've only been testing it with employees is how it's been working okay. uh, so far. But okay. now it's it's gone well enough to where this would be, yeah, up to a 40,000 square foot supermarket. How which big is, is that? huge. Yeah, no, um, know, like... Is that, that like Costco size or is that like Fred Meyer? I think that's like Costco size if I'm not. I mean, that's yeah. so big it's hard to even fathom. Like, right. I don't know. We'd have to look up and compare it to what your local. Feet. What else I'd, is 40? It's, um, <laughs> yeah, off the top of your head. About 40 of my living rooms. That's about how I can figure it out. 
Uh, so <laughs> that's you have a right thousand there. square foot living room. Uh, well, the first floor of the house. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Never mind. The I was like, my apartment's like five hundred. It's gonna be big. <laughs> floor yeah, of the house. Huge, yeah. That yeah. includes three bedrooms on the side. So yeah. So yeah. That's forty of the first floors maybe, of my house. Yeah, maybe a smaller Costco, I guess. Right. Yeah, maybe. I maybe don't know. Costco. Either right. way, it's huge. <laughs> and it would only have three to ten employees at any one time. The rest would be run by robots that so are, that are handling the, the rest of it. The employees are going to be downstairs kind of facilitating some of the, the interactions and then, like, trying to get people to sign up for Amazon. Yeah, they'll I'm have sure. the salesperson yeah. greeter. And the robots will be stocking the shelves. And security will be downstairs, too. And, then okay. the, ro- and the robots will be stocking stocking order like they're fulfilling orders upstairs apparently amazon orders that people place downstairs or online that people want to come and pick up so you can oh, pick gotcha. up that stuff yeah. as well so as they'll being have a supermarket the, yeah a stock warehouse upstairs but then the full supermarket downstairs. yeah that's what it sounds like huh this is interesting they must uh, you must have a card that they give you to scan you your must NFC. yeah you must yeah. To go when in you, go you must have an amazon oh, yeah, yeah you've got to have a right, right right you got to have a membership and then they'll persuade people who are not a prime membership. I guess they'll have somebody standing there at the door. Oh, you should really try prime. You know, one of those right. things. Mm-hmm. A salesperson at the door. But still, I don't know how you really make this secure. I was just thinking that. I mean, how would you yeah, use- it's being scanned, but there's there's three to ten employees. Unless the robot's going to stop you, you know, and it, do not leave. You have not paid for this. You know, something like that. It's it, That's my robot voice, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> that, it just like, tases you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really old robot. It's inefficient. Um, but, I mean, how are they really going to keep this secure? Because why wouldn't you just walk in there, grab what you want, walk out? They said some of the employees downstairs well, would be security. Um, but are they going to be able to stop? They'd have to outfit the doors with the sensors. And yeah. then, and then I, don't just I don't know how they would in. stop you because, like, once you're off the grounds, I mean, don't most retail stores say, like, you well, can't chase anybody? Was, if it was something like a turnstile, like mm-hmm. a, like in a subway, like, that that could work maybe. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And you couldn't get through. You couldn't yeah. get I through mean, and you couldn't get back out without swiping. Scanning, right. I mean, would it be any less secure than, say, a Target, though? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, mean, just, I mean, technically, you just I mean, walk and get stolen from Target out. all the time. You know, that's you what know. I'm saying. I don't think there'll be the security be even store, more yeah. rigorous than it is already at most right. retail stores. Um, and some comments coming through here in the chat. Uh, Erica says it's the size of a Planet Fitness. That's how big uh, 40,000 oh square God. feet is. Thank so. you, Erica. That's pretty yeah. big. Yes, we appreciate that because that's uh, not our I forte is figuring out that. It. No. Um, <laughs> that helps. What's a Planet Fitness? Yeah. Now we need to get down that. I know. I know. Let's see. Smaller than Costco. Okay. Everybody's everybody's helping us out with the size. I like. Caleb, Caleb says that most of the employees will be downstairs smoking weed. It's just probably true. Which, yeah, yeah you never know. I mean, it's in Seattle right now. You know Does that's what's going on. <laughs> 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 he had to chime in. It is the podcast. Absolutely. Um, Jeff says facial recognition, which, yeah, that's possible. But, I mean, I think a lot of it's going to be with, I, I suppose, if you tried to run well, out. Well, how quickly that guy walked out, yeah. though. Would be, and it would be just hard, especially if like, a lot of people were walking mm-hmm. out at once. Like, that system would just go haywire, trying yeah. to scan everybody's face or charging you for something that someone else bought. You know, it would be something that, like, they either are in your phone or Yeah, and also, sort of I think that Amazon's probably going about this to make more money and, and reduce cost up front, like, paying people. So, obviously, I don't think they would implement something that, like, expensive right. technology-wise. It yeah. would be yeah. a lot simpler. I mean, just getting that chip up or and running with all the robots, I mean, that's costly. Right. So but then once injected, it's there, they don't have to pay anybody. You know, there's no uh, no insurance to worry about. Well, I think, until but... robot rights become a... Right. And that, <laughs> right. then that's an issue. Um, well, it's working now in Seattle. Like, what it, does it say what they're using in, in terms of pay? Or no, it's just employees. I think it's, yeah, just for employees only right now. I don't know if it goes into too much detail other than it seems to be working well for them. And they're going, they are going to take this further. Huh. Um, so it's just a matter of when, and you, you know, they will, mm-hmm. because then they can probably also use these as hubs, like I said, for deliveries for other things or right. their drone hubs. Or yeah. there are the Amazon lockers too. That's true. Does anyone use those? No, the other I never oh, like have. Seven Eleven and whatnot. Yeah, they're like locations where they'll drop off packages instead of to your doorstep. They'll just drop it off the location, then you as go if pick it, like it up. Like a PO box. box. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. Okay. Uh, somebody's comparing this, uh, Syed's comparing this technology to Minority Report, and Jeff says, uh, I don't think you know how far that technology has come since Minority Report, which actually... Which Minority to... Report are we talking about? Oh, yeah, the original or the newer one? Or the one? TV show. Or the TV show. Or was in the book, too? Mm. Oh, there's the book, too. <laughs> well, before we move on, I just want to say, I love the idea of not talking to anybody. <laughs> And a checkout. Oh my That's gosh! Yes. Wonderful. I'd go right to the U check every time I'm yes, in the store, even if I have time. a cart full of stuff. Like but I'm like, like uh, I'll yeah. deal with it. I'll do it myself. But so. the nicer places don't have that, like New Seasons or Whole Foods or. Right. Oh yeah, whatnot. you have to talk yeah, to somebody. Yeah, you have to talk Trader to somebody. And yeah. I don't. I'm not antisocial. I'll talk to somebody. Right. Fine. But <laughs> the idea of like getting out quicker and not waiting in a line and right. not making small talk is just lovely. It's nice to have the option. Yeah, yeah. but just you like, guys, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. 
What's outdoors? All right, well, we've, we've got a couple of things left here to get through uh, just to talk about it. And, and the Minority Report thing kind of breaks it up because this new technology is it's pretty sci-fi-like, and it's coming from Google. And it's something using the Google brain. And it's essentially, you know in a, in a sci-fi movie where there's, there's a crime committed, they've got a fuzzy image on a, a still image. And they're like, okay, zoom in. And it recreates the face right. and zooms in, like pixelates it and, and comes up with an identification. That's what they're patenting. That's what they've come up with. So you can take an eight by eight pixel photo, and we've got a we got an image if you're listening or if you're watching right now, and it will recreate it. And it's got two different uh, AI neural networks that are um, analyzing this, and they recreate what they think the face could look like. That's the face that they're using for an example. Completely pixelated that they can do this much. How how accurate has it been? They said it's not a hundred percent. It's more. It would be. It's not 100%, but they're still working on it, but it's pretty accurate. It gives you a good idea of what somebody would maybe look like. It's not as accurate, they said, as like a sketch right now, but they're, the fact that they're just this far along is pretty incredible that they've been able to get to this. I so mean, this would be for crime then? Is for that- crime or for whatever. I, I suppose you could use it for any number of different things, but yeah, crime is what I yeah, would think of. Cool. Who is that person? Yeah, it's yeah. like for any other zoom reason. in, right. you know, and then they zoom in on it. Um, Runner. Yeah, Ice-T's going right. to love this. Or is Ice Cube? Who's it's Ice-T. Ice-T, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think. Um, yes. The, the, uh, Thank God we figured that yeah, out, right, you guys. Yeah. Case closed. Uh, somebody worried. in the chat. Wait, please is he help us out. Is it yeah. Ice-T or Ice Cube? Yeah. Ice-T or Ice Cube? Somebody let us know. Um, but I don't know. I think that's pretty cool that, that you would be able to do this. I mean, what, what, the, you know, what you could utilize it for other than, you know, creeping on people or, um, or some kind of a crime type of thing, I, I don't know, but the idea that they can recreate something out of that pixelated of a photo right. is pretty incredible. Like grainy security footage yeah. is where it would like really come into play, because it wouldn't even or, be pixelated, it would just be like helping clean up like a dirty Clean up photo, what it is. You know? Or, I mean, satellite imagery. I mean, oh, imagine yeah. how much closer yeah. you could get if yeah. you were able to do this, yeah. you know, with that kind of technology. But it, it, it takes into account other images, correct? That's how it essentially builds these faces? It's like kind of, yeah. Like what, of images. So you right. have to have it, the Im- other similar images. For right now, for yeah. Work. Yep, okay. yep. So it's kind of like facial recognition stuff or like recognizing things, um, you know, how it'll recognize things in, in a photo. Uh, so it's kind of like that. They're, they're picking up on that kind of technology. But where it's going is pretty cool. Um, I think it's I think it's pretty fascinating of what you'd be able to do with this kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean and this that, is just the start of it. Right. Where they're going with that. I mean, cuz once you incorporate that kind of technology, the facial recognition aspect of it, I mean, it'll be able to recognize if it can go down so to quickly, that small yeah. of a pixel and it has a picture of you, boom, you're going to be instantly Leave it to recognized. Google. This is called Google Brain. Google Brain. Just the the B in alphabet that they're just are they building out a company for every letter of the alphabet? Pretty much. I yeah. think that's what it is. Yeah. So Google Brain, that is something that they have uh, come out with. And let's go to their final story today. And we're kind of all over the board here at the end, but I wanted to bring this up since we're going down the science fiction route because this sounds like a terrible idea. And it's <laughs> it's something that SpaceX is doing right now, and they are delivering to the uh, to the International Space Station a vat a vat that's probably not the right word a <laughs> Uh, delivering MRSA virus to the space station to study it in um, zero gravity environments just to see how it interacts in there. This sounds just like that movie that's coming out with Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah, the life, life one. Yeah. yeah, where something terrible is going to go wrong. They're all going to get infected. It's going to crash to the earth, and then we all get MRSA. But um, <laughs> the, the idea of studying it in that is, is pretty interesting, of, of bringing something up there into space. Well, the yeah, idea I behind so is it, they think it... They think the bacterium will um, mutate faster in a zero gravity environment. So if you can, if it mutates faster, then you can anticipate yeah. how it will yeah, mutate you can on predict, Earth. Yeah. That's you fair. can predict it yeah. and work on medicines to remedy. You know, eleven thousand people supposedly die from MRSA related every, to the yeah. virus sure, huh. or the bacterium. So. I guess that's a good point, but yeah, that leaves like a big margin of error like if something happens right like, and then it yeah. doesn't yeah it, i mean it could happen a bunch of different ways if it's just like based on an algorithm or something like that then it's who knows yeah <laughs> i mean yeah. the what if scenarios on this are the what ifs are, are through the roof if you guys this. ever played the game dead space you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like very similar thing could be going on there uh but i mean yeah no i, I agree with you brandon i mean it is a good application for figuring out how yeah. it reacts of what know, it's like, going uh, to what I the mean, future is of that technology Who's to say whether or not it'll be accurate? But it's really yeah, interesting because right. it might mutate independently of the strands on Earth. You never know. So. Yeah. Which is funny that they think it would mutate fast because are they doing that like astronaut study with the Kelly brothers? And he spent a year in space, and he actually looked like he aged slower than his brother who was on Earth. Uh, I yeah, that's true. Yeah, that. with the twins. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's interesting. 
So I don't know, but I guess obviously bacteria might react differently yeah. than a human being. But well, if it works, I mean, then that's that's applicable to so many other different viruses. We, you know, mm-hmm. the flu kills right thousands right. and thousands yep. of people every year. Or it's like say it says uh, Resident Evil in space, and that's what we could end up with. Yeah. I think. That's, yeah, we could. I think that's a good possibility. I think yeah. we're pretty Umbrella. safe. Umbrella floating sure around up there. That's good. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, I think that's probably all the time we have. So we've covered a lot of different topics today, and this is what we do every week with Trends with Benefits. We're live on Facebook and YouTube, and we love getting feedback. So if you have a if you're listening via audio, always send an email podcast at digitaltrends.com or leave a comment on the videos. We've got links to all of the different articles we talked about at digitaltrends.com. You can go and check those out. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in live every Thursday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific. And we will be back next week with another episode.